Yeah, it's rewind time. Hey everyone, it's me, Pagey, here once again with another video on The Flash, or did I just say that extremely weird? Whatever it was, The Flash, and more specifically, another episode of Flashback Reviews. This is, of course, the series where we go back in time, visually, I guess you would say, not physically, we're not going through the Speed Force or anything like that, but we go back and we look back at some of the, you know, the greatest and top-rated episodes of The Flash since season one, since the beginning. Mostly taking episodes from seasons one to three to make it like a real proper flashback, but some episodes, I'm sure, from later seasons may creep into this series. But if you do have a major preference for an episode you would love or just think should be flashback to, uh, let me know that in the comment section down below. I'm all ears. In this episode of Flashback Reviews, we'll be looking back at episode 23. Yes, that's a weird number nowadays, but episode 23 of season one. That's right, the season finale, otherwise entitled Fast Enough. Now, of course, feel free to continue watching, but if you do want to go back and watch the episode for yourself before you know, dialing in and watching this video, feel free to do that, to do that as well. Uh, even though as soon as I start talking about the episodes, you know, memory should just start flooding back into that, you know, into that brain. Now, as I will always do, I will let you know um, of the next episode in this series that we will be flashbacking to before jumping into this episode, just so you can get prepared if you want to. And the next episode we'll be going over is, drum roll. <laughs> Thank you, Gorilla Grodd. Uh, episode six of season two. Yes, that's right. Enter Zoom is the next episode we'll be flashbacking to. And uh, well, Barry, uh, better get ready because uh, I think we all know what's happening there. But yeah, let's jump into it. But of course, let me know your various thoughts on this episode in the comments section down below, what you loved about it, or your just general thoughts, everything like that, as well as dropping a like on the video to support the series. Uh, would be greatly appreciated if you could do that. But yeah, here is our Speed Force recap of the episode. Leading into this episode, we had some decent sized reveals with Iris learning properly that Barry was the Flash. This time, a tsunami didn't uh, cause Barry to erase that moment. Eddie learned about his time traveling descendant and we had some fun with the rogues returning. With Reverse Flash being taken down by the Flash with some help from Firestorm and Green Arrow. Well, technically at that point it was Al Sahim, anyway. But as we start this episode, we have Barry giving an epic monologue as he goes to approach Eobard Thorn, aka Reverse Flash, in the pipeline. With Eobard not happy, Barry didn't show up with his big belly burger. Urgh. Barry asks why Eobard killed his mother. It's because Eobard hates Barry. Even though Thorn was trying to kill young Barry, edgy. These events leaving Thorn behind in the past, leading him to create the Flash, and well, you just played yourself there, Eobard. Barry has the chance to save his mother, change the timeline, which would result in many changes, which most of Team Flash seem to be fine with, even though sad with at the same time, except Henry, who doesn't want Barry to change anything at all. Man tears were cried at this time, very emotional. Cisco learns he was affected by the particle accelerator, <gasps> mic drop. Stein inspires Eddie to kill himself, random. Caitlin and Ronnie get married, cute. Barry runs back in time, epic. We see different events from timelines, or the timeline, with Killer Frost, himself in jail, Flash Museum, and that random ass Legend of Tomorrow trailer that had nothing to do with the actual show on it. Remember that? That was stupid. When he arrives, he is told by his future self, the ever-elusive original timeline Flash, to not save his mother, and she is killed again by Reverse Flash. Another crying time moment with older Barry and his mother, Jay Garrick helmet, that's interesting. Barry destroys the time sphere, Thorn's triggered, Gonna kill everyone. Boom, Eddie shoots himself, erasing Eobard from the timeline. Cue those vasectomy memes. Singularity opens up. Uh-oh, Central City is getting eaten up. Captain Cold and Hawkgirl cameos. Barry charges at it, and we cut to black. That's the end of season one. But as we will have throughout this series, we'll be going through the pros and cons of these episodes. But of course, as they are the greatest and most top rated, or the greatest and top rated episodes of The Flash, uh, there won't be too many cons. Uh, if anything, they're nitpicks or just slight annoyances. And there actually is one con for this episode. You might have a con that you want to put in here, which is fair enough. But my one con for this episode is that god dang damn it flippin' frickin' cliffhanger. I was so triggered. If you were watching The Flash live and you had that cliffhanger... Seriously, the remotes were about to get pegged. It was so annoying because you knew you were five months. You were five months away from seeing the fallout from that. 
oh, it was annoying. And you're in the moment as well when you're watching that episode. You're not looking at, okay, we've got two minutes left. We've got one minute left. We've got 30 seconds left. You're not looking at the timer. I'm just invested. I'm like, okay, what's happening here? Because so much is happening. Reverse Flash just got erased. And this is happening. What the hell? We just had a Jay Garrick helmet come out. What the hell's going on here? And then it ends. I was, if you watched live, you knew exactly what, you know, I was feeling. You know, I think we all have a similar feeling. If you were binge watching and you were catching up on like Netflix or something like that, I envy you because you could just jump straight into season two and literally see the other half of that. We waited five months. It was annoying. But anyway, onto the pros. There are a lot of pros in this episode, but a lot of them are like condensed into just the same thing, if that makes sense. You understand when I start talking right now. So the first pro of this episode is the character moments. This is when I think the Flash is at its strongest, is when you feel like a really strong bond between characters, or there's just good chemistry between the characters. I think that's why the Flash has always been successful. People can go, it's just people can say it's oh, it's just an easy show to for people to get invested in, um, because visually and stuff like that, but it does have really good character moments, which still exist in present day, but in this episode it was like to the to the next level. So we had just great cra- character moments. Pretty much all of them were with Grant Gustin and someone else. So for example, he has great moments with um, uh, Tom Cavanaugh's Eobard Thorne. John Wesley Ship's Henry Allen, that one in the prison is really tough to watch. Um, uh, Jesse L. Martin's Joe West. That's, that's another great scene. The two scenes between Henry and Joe are probably the best because they're so emotional. It's him talking to his father figures. One, he's trying to save and, you know, fix his normal life. And the other one, he um, would probably forget, for the most part, completely, if he went back and changed time. So those two scenes were great. And then there's, an even, there's even a scene with Barry and Iris, which is really good, which sort of wraps up their story for that season. Because Iris actually isn't in this episode that much, funnily enough. I didn't realize until watching the episode. Looking back, I thought Iris is in a lot of those last three or four episodes of season one. She's actually not in this finale that much, which I was sort of surprised. But I think in total, she's in maybe like four scenes and I was like oh she's hardly in this finale it's pretty much all team flash and reverse flash but her and Barry have a good scene which sort of wraps up as I said that season one story between them but even though I just mentioned him I think it's important to single him out and just go wow and that's Tom Kavanagh he's amazing in this episode he completely sells it obviously Matt Letcher does return to play reverse flash for like 10 seconds and one line um that's about it he comes back to play it but Tom Cavanaugh is just like, he kills it in this episode. Scenes with Grant, scenes with just the rest of Team Flash. And he has a really good scene with um, Carlos Valdez or Cisco. He has a really good scene with him as well. Tom Cavanaugh was just, he's probably MVP of the episode, but he's really, really close to Grant because Grant does a really good job. But Grant had been doing a lot of good stuff the entire season. But Tom just had some really good scenes um, like that stood out in this episode as well. But it's close between those two. One pro I thought was the Caitlin and Ronnie wedding. And that's mainly because of, well, the first one is has Don't Dream It's Over by Crowded House, which is an Australian band. Uh, there's a bit of New Zealander in there, but I'll claim them as Australian. Uh, just fully claim them. Uh, there was a nice and cute moment there. Um, well, like before tragedy goes down and, uh, well, yeah, just, just a singularity opens and tries to eat the city. But of course, we all, all know what happens in episode one of season two. So this is a nice, nice moment because we know what happens in the premiere for season two. So yeah, obviously it'd be stupid if I didn't mention this as a pro, the older Barry and Nora scene. Um, if you didn't cry, you're, you are indeed a monster. That's still one of the best scenes. Um, obviously I'll just put the clip of Kevin Smith crying to it because that's pretty much a meme at this point, but um, that's just a great scene. That, that That's just a great scene, especially because Grant Gustin, I think that's the first scene he has with Michelle Harrison, who plays Nora. I think that's the first scene. Obviously, we're in season six now. There's been heaps of scenes where Grant Gustin's interacted with Michelle Harrison's Nora Allen, but I, from memory, that's the first one where he's actually there and interacts with her. That's his first scene with her, and it's that emotional. That's a scene you'd expect him to have with someone like... Henry, Joe, you know, uh, Tom Cavanaugh as well. It's like anyone on Team Flash, Candace Patton. That's a scene you'd expect him to have with one of those actors, not someone he's probably meeting or at least interacting and acting with for the first time. I'm sure he would have met her earlier on, but in regards to acting for the first time, that's crazy that that was the scene. It's just such a good scene. Um, and even though it does get maimed as well in regards to gifts, but amazing scene. And the final pro, even though once again, as I said before, like my pro sort of encapsulated a lot of different things. And my final pro is just the last like five to 10 minutes of this finale. 
it's just insane. Like, it isn't just insane what goes on. It's probably the craziest of any comic book show in regards to twist, scale, and just epicness in regards to how this last of fi- last five to ten minutes plays out because the entire finale isn't like bang, bang, bang. Like, we tend to get that now in a lot of shows, not just The Flash. Like, the finale is like bang, 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 right till the end. But the Flash has like a slow build of like him because like, it's like set up that he's going to time travel and it slowly builds up to that. And then you get the time travel, then him not saving his mother coming back, the, the fights. It's just all over the joint in the best way possible. It's just so much going on. Uh, obviously, I enjoyed the last five to ten minutes, except the freaking cliffhanger that's still triggered by it. So I'm still having like some sort of like traumatic experience thinking back to that moment. God, five month wait. What were you doing? What were you doing, Belanti? Five month wait. Are you serious? But yeah, just that last five to 10 minutes, just wow. And th- 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 this season allowed that to happen. I think it's like unfair to say, oh, why don't all the other seasons do that? Because it's easier to do it then with the story they provided. Sometimes you aren't able to do that. Um, but it, even though like, I think some seasons have tried to do it, just that it didn't really match um, the level of twist scale. And as I said, just epicness that this last five to 10 minutes uh, provided in the season one finale. But man, what a good episode. Not just a good finale, what just just what a good episode amazing but yeah overall this was number two listed in regards to the top rated episodes of all time and to be honest i think it deserves to be there i i really in- loved watching this episode as i said the only con is that thing right at the end the cliffhanger that last one second where it's just a flash still frame looking at me like a cgi barry and just looking at me going oh you gotta wait five months i'm like no you're an idiot like actually i'm the idiot i know but anyway <laughs> yeah Everything in this episode, I'm happy with when I went, went, went back and watched. I had no issues with, and um, I think it fully deserves to be up there as one of the top rated episodes, and more specifically, the second highest rated episode of all time, um, according to fans on IMDb, um, IMDb. So yeah, couldn't agree with it more. But thanks for watching, guys. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you did, it'd be awesome if you could drop a like and it shows support. Let me know in the comments section down below your various opinions on this episode. Do you think it holds up? Do you still love it? Do you have any issues with it going back to watching it if you did go back and watch it? Various things like that. Were you triggered with the cliffhanger as much as I was or did you watch it on a binge? Were you one of those lucky people that didn't start watching The Flash tools like airing season three and caught up? I envy you, but yeah. <laughs> uh, let me know your various opinions down there in the comments and um, yeah. Uh, did I say, if you want, if you enjoyed the video, drop a like. If you did do that. And of course, if you are new to the channel, make sure to subscribe. And um, yeah, I'll catch you guys later. Goodbye.